Hi, I'm J. Michael Silver, and this is Foundational Steps, the show. This is not uh, the normal episode, um, or interview, or anything like that. Uh, this is something I've been obsessed with for a few decades. I've become enthralled, or I became enthralled with physics um, when I was just a few years old. I was especially drawn to light, prisms, and optics. My first few science projects in elementary school were on light, um, optical illusions, and harmonics. When I was like 16 or 17, I thought if there is if, or if everything is connected by energy or the fabric of space-time, it must have some visual representation. I wanted to know what that looked like or why I couldn't or, or how I could see it. As a meditation exercise, I would think about a candle burning and what it would look like if it could burn in outer space, you know, a vacuum. This was the early 90s and blacklight posters were super popular. The image of these repeating patterns got me thinking about how everything can be broken down into fractions of itself, and that the singularity that physicists sought is just the opposite of breaking everything down. Instead of, of trying to look at smaller and smaller, I started to think bigger while looking for patterns on different scales. I was I was reading the works of the typical notable figures in physics, but I was really floored by David Baum. He, well, he was a an assistant professor in Princeton, you know, and David Baum significantly impacted Albert Einstein's work, which we all know. David Baum might be the most underrated scientist of the last century. It's conceivable without him, Albert Einstein would not have made some of his breakthroughs when he did. Anyhow, um, sometime in college, I was at a nightclub watching the lights and sound bouncing off everything as people danced. In an instant, I could see the fabric of space-time through all of the movement of sound, light, and dancing bodies. It was a fractal pattern of, of interconnected circles spinning around and inside and out of each other. The best analogy is like chainmail armor occupying at least four spatial dimensions. It made sense to me, like I had rediscovered my hand or something. I've spent years trying to explain this visual represent representation to people of, of how these little connected donuts or torus can provide us with infinite permutations and outcomes of reality. For the last 20 plus years, I've explored this idea in many ways. It's, it's easy to imagine this concept on a biological level because it is literally how cell division and organic materials grow on a psychological level and the nature of consciousness, it can be used to explain how we dream and perceive waking reality. I've yet to find a way it doesn't relate to our concept of reality. And it also answers or, or fills in all the gaps that need to be clarified between philosophy and science. Now, part of me has been expecting some famous physicist to come out with this for over 20 years. No one ever does. But when I read books of modern luminaries like Sean Carroll, I see it clearly in their work. To give an example of what's wrong with the many worlds interpretation, there are not infinite versions of me. If I was to tune into the correct carrier frequency to shift into an alternate, alternate dimension, I would not find myself there without looking in the mirror. Finding a version of myself would be more like seeing an actor playing me. It's still not me. However, those dimensions exist and are separated by the liminal space from which the very fabric of space-time is spun. Time is the fundamental property that generates the frequency from which space emerges. The carrier frequency, which we call gravitational waves, is what we are in sync with. If you want to learn more about my thoughts, check out the post on Substack by the same name. The link will be in the description. Remember, your life is your story and you can rewrite it as 
often as you want. I hope you're living up to your dreams or working to get there. Till next time. Thank you.